So Shaul Yalovsky from uh, Tel Aviv University will talk about plants and uh, stress. Thank you for the invitation to this nice place to speak to you. Okay. So these are the people who have uh, done, done the work and so I'll describe a few projects in my lab which relate to stress and plant development. And the first project has to do with heat, uh, uh, heat tolerance in tomatoes. So, oops. So um, plants, um, you know, tomato are, uh, you know, when they grow at high temperatures are pretty stable, but when they try to make flowers and fruits, then they become very sensitive and they don't do it at high temperature, such as what happens here in, in the summer where the temperature can go above 42 degrees. So one approach that one can take is to use uh, genetic resources which are out there and you just have to dig and look for them and uh, without manipulating uh, the plant, without making transgenic plants, which is, you know, problem from, uh, uh, from li for licensing. And this is what we do. And uh, we identified together with colleagues from uh, the Palestinian Authority uh, a natural variety of uh, tomato, which when grown at high temperature, becomes, uh, it is heat tolerant and it does make flowers. This is one thing I'm going to show you. The other project which relates to um, <clears throat> plant stress is how plant development actually is uh, regulated by stress. This is a big question. Plants are sessile organisms. They don't, cannot change their place. They cannot hide from the heat or when they are uh, water stressed, they cannot look for water so easily. So what happens to plant development during this? And uh, we have a nice model system that is at least describes one aspect of this. Two aspects which I'm not going to talk to, which we study in the lab, is intracellularly uh, what happens uh, when plants are stressed and plants, some components in the cell, like the cell wall, like the cytoskeleton change, and then they change the cell wall. And this affects the way plants respond to, for example, soil stress. I don't have time to speak about this. And then we have quite a lot of work on uh, calcium binding proteins. So calcium is a second messenger in a lot of res plant responses to different uh, environmental signaling. And uh, we have very interesting project which relate to that, which I'm also not going to talk about. So heat tolerant. So M M82 is a commercial variety, Agvaniot Tamar, Tomar, Tamar, Tomato, I think every Israeli knows that. And when you grow them under control temperatures, like at 25 degrees, they do make flowers and fruits, everything is fine. But when you heat shock them for six hours at 42 degrees, they don't develop flowers and uh, they will not develop fruits. Um, a variety that was identified at the, in the Palestinian Authority, which is called uh, P2, actually is successfully making some flowers, even fruits, at 42 degrees. And uh, we actually proved that, so we grew in the, have grown the plants under controlled environment, and you can see that this M82 variety, the Tamar tomatoes, they do make flower buds, but they cannot make flowers or fruits when grown under 42 <coughs> degrees, whereas these P2 tomatoes do make flowers. They sometimes make fruit, and if, you know, you move them from the uh, heat regime, the flowers are viable and will then make uh, fruits. 
So then what you do is you have to look for the gene, and this is something that we do with uh, g g uh, next generation sequencing. And we are quite advanced. We think that we are very close to a, uh, a region in, on chromosome 8 in tomato, which uh, so hopefully we can identify this gene soon, and then we can verify the mutation. And this will be, uh, I think, a very interesting thing also from a theoretical <coughs> point of view to study what actually is going on in this plant and how do these tomato plants become uh, resistant to these high temperatures. The other project that I'm going to tell you about has to do with development, how plant development, and in this case specifically is a root, is affected by uh, drought stress and salt stress. So when affected by drought or stress or, or salt stress, plants make high amount of a compound called abscisic acid, or ABA in short, which is a general stress hormone. And it has been studied for a long time, but not in relation to development. What uh, we found out that actually ABA affects the development of vascular tissues in the root, and these tissues are the tissues which conduct the water from the root to uh, the shoot of the plant. So these tissues in the root develop in a highly organized manner, and this uh, is regulated by uh, a very complex uh, signaling and genetic system. And um, what we found out that when we uh, treat the plant are undergoing uh, drought stress or when treated with ABA, they make more of these tissues. And uh, it took us a long time to persuade ourselves that this is actually from ABA, that it's not some kind of contamination because nobody, ABA was never considered to be a developmental hormone. So we did all that. I'm not going to describe it. And we do uh, know through genetic analysis of mu different mutants that this is a truly ABA response and this uh, ABA affects transcription factors which then induce the differentiation of this tissue. What we then try to do is un understand how ABA functions, and what we found out that um, what ABA does, it increases the expression of two microRNAs. These are small RNAs that are expressed in a tissue of the root which is called the endodermis. From the endodermis, these small microRNAs move into the center of the root where they suppress the expression of transcription factors which are called, uh, which is called fabulosa, and fabulosa inhibits the development of the vascular tissue. So by restricting the, restricting the, the expression of fabulosa, these microRNAs are inducing the development of the vascular tissue, and this is what, you know, ABA is doing. Now, so this is just, um, uh, uh, just a scheme that described what we found out. We, what we found out that under water stress, ABA is increased, and ABA signaling at the tip of the root induces this microRNA, which in, uh, reduces the level of this fabulosa, and due to that, there is earlier differentiation and more differentiation of vascular tissues in the root. And then came another question. There was a publication in 2013 from a group in, uh, the, um, in Stanford University where they have looked at lateral root development. So the root, may, there is a primary root, and then the root expands and makes lateral roots. And it is a known effect that soil stress or drought stress through ABA, inhibit lateral root development, and what, it, they, what a, the salt stress do through ABA, it arrests lateral root development, and at a very early stage, this is shown here, this is a root treated with sodium chloride, and its development is arrested. And what this... Uh, researchers were able to show that, and that the signaling that affects the arrest of the root at this stage, occurs in the endodermis, the same tissue where we found out that this micro ABA induces this microRNA 
to uh, regulate the differentiation of the vascular tissue. So what we said, hmm, maybe the mechanism by which ABA works is actually through these microRNAs that act and affect this developmental of this uh, lateral root. And uh, the lateral root develops from a group of cells which it develops next to the center of the root, which uh, starts to divide. And then, just before the lateral root emerges out of the main root, it becomes sort of independent. There are stem cells develop here at the edge, and then this lateral root can develop independently. And it is di at this stage where ABA actually arrests the root. And what we found out, that indeed, when we look, at the microRNA, which is uh, shown here in red dots, it is, you know, gradually going up, and then there are cells here at the tip which will become the stem cells of the la lateral root where this microRNA goes down. And what we found out that ABA increases this microRNA specifically at this stage, at the post-pre-emergent state, and prevents the reduction of the microRNA here at the cell which will, should become the stem cells, and they don't become stem cells, and therefore the fabulosa is arrested and the lateral root is arrested. So the same mechanism by which, um, which, regulates the by which ABA regulates development of vascular tissue apparently function in, uh, in the arrest of uh, the lateral root. Now I want to go to another project which relates to salt stress. And this is when you grow uh, Arabidopsis plants, wild type plants, on uh, 120 uh, millimolar of sodium chloride, they still grow and they are fine. However, we uh, identified mutants in which become yellow, meaning that they are sensitive to the salt. Okay? So, w and we wanted to inquire how does that happen. So one mechanism is by the control of the stomata. The stomata are pores which are found in the leaves, and they are open or closed due to uh, drought or salt stress, due to this hormone ABA. And when they are open, water are transpired from the root to the shoot, and by that, uh, solutes are conducted from the roots up to, up to the leaves and um, by that also salt can arrive to the leaves. So this could be one mechanism that salt actually affect, our mutant actually affect how the stomata are open and affects the transpiration rates to the stomata, and by that is affecting uh, the uh, sensitivity of the plants to the salt. How, so this is one mechanism which could be that through regulating our mutant through regulating this ABA signaling affects the opening of the stomata and the transpiration. However, in the root, in this uh, tissue which is called an en the endodermis, there is a water conducting barrier which engulfs the center of the root where the vascular tissues are. These are the vascular tissues and this is just this barrier which is called the Casparian strip. And what the Casparian strip is doing, it acts like a barrier so the water cannot penetrate through between the cells and they have to go in the cells. So water and also solutes like sodium chloride have to go into the cells. So this tissue, the endodermis, functions like an, the epithelium in our gut to regulate how much salt and how much water are going into the plants. So Potentially, our mutant could also affect, you know, the development of this uh, tissue or the Casparian strip, and by that regulate how uh, the plant becomes sensitive to the salt. And uh, indeed, we saw that in, in our mutant, so here you see the Casparian strip, it's here, uh, it's a continuous tissue, and in the mutant, it's discontinuous. So the Casparian strip is discontinuous, which means that there is no control of the solutes and salt inserting into the root. So is it really the 
transpiration in the stomata or the, uh, the com compromised development of the Casparian strip in the root. And for that, we've used genetic trick where we have uh, expressed different mutants under, under different promoters in different tissues and either so we have used this promoter and we checked whether the Casparian strip is compromised and this is very easy to do because you just have to use a water soluble dye and if the Casparian strip is functional it will stop the, wa the, the water soluble dye from going into the vascular tissue and there will not you will not see staining of the vascular tissue. However, in mutants, you will see the vascular tissues are stained because the Casparian strip is compromised. So, but we knew that this promoter, this ROP11 promoter, is expressed in the stomata. So we have a system where we, we can uh, compromise the development of the Casparian strip without affecting the stomata or affect the stomata without affecting the uh, Casparian strip, and then we have in the department uh, an equipment which uh, is a multi, uh, multi trait uh, phenomics unit where we can measure a lot of the parameters such as photosynthetic rate, water content, the plant size, and what uh, we could conclude from this experiment that. In our mutants, what is affected is really uh, the transpiration. And this is the main thing, this is the main mechanism by which these plants become sensitive to the salt. And if we affect the, uh, only the Casparian strip, the plants, they become smaller, but they remain green because they can still close the stomata, they keep the water, and they don't die. Whereas if they are affected in the stomata, they transpire more, they uptake more salt to the leaves, and uh, regardless, of the so regardless of the fact that the Casparian strip is compromised and does not uh, filter the salt very well, the pl these plants can still survive, and there is a long uh, distance signaling that somehow affects their development and induces their stomata uh, closing. So this is what I wanted to tell you, and thank you very much. So tomato are important uh, than silicone. So we will ask about tomato. So why, why do you think that uh, one gene will be responsible for the heat uh, stress resistance. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, I would expect many genes. Uh, I'm sure there are many genes, but uh, we've done a mapping. Uh, we actually created what we call a mapping population. And in this case, it segregates as, a, as a one gene, uh, one loci. Uh, okay. Stress. These tomato strains are growing for agriculture or in, uh, in nature? I mean, uh, uh, they are not growing in, in nature. the Palestinian are, Authority. Uh, you know, they are uh, field varieties which existed. Some uh, German scientists identified in the Palestinian Authority many, many years ago okay. and brought them to uh, researchers in Bethlehem University. And then, you know, we did an organized experiment in a greenhouse mm -hmm. with controlled temperature, and then we could identify them and then go forward with the sequencing. Good. Okay. More questions? Thank you.